In the distant land of Tessera, to the south, were two bright stars of hope. Braving the raging seas, they reached Ardra and began to spread their faith. Day by day, the crystal faith grew, and soon churches dotted the lands. At one of his churches, Sadali learned something odd from the stained glass. The depiction of God matched that of the Winged One, said to exist in Ardra. That God, Gilgamesh, traversed time itself to destroy the Realm Scourge. Yet his plans did not unfold as he had envisioned leaving the future hinged on the arrival of one who would bring about miracles, the Bearer of Light. So this search also appears to have turned up not. Several of the villagers said that they had definitely sighted the Winged One around here. I have no reason to doubt them. But... Axia must surely be worried about me by now. It has been nearly ten days since I left the village. I best be heading back soon. It was but a blur, but I saw it. That was no bird. The form of a man gliding across the sky on spread wings. The stories, they were true. Oh, God. Please wait. Your faithful servant journeys to bask in your presence. How did it go? It feels like the night before a great battle. As to which countries I should bestow the rings upon, I cannot yet ascertain. Oh. Somebody's coming. I do not sense anything. Is this another one of your premonitions? We are on the summit of a steep and craggy mountain. One does not simply wander upon this place. Perhaps the fates guide them. In which case, it may be our bearer of light. Ah. Are you able to tell whether they are indeed the light bearer or not? I see a light that is currently a mere glimmer peeking over the horizon. But soon it could climb skywards and shine upon the Earth. Or it could yet grow fearful of the coming night and sink behind the ridgeline. Which will happen? Nobody can tell. For our fates are ever evolving. So, it is too early to tell whether they will illuminate the world or bring about darkness. I'm afraid so. But the fact that we need his power remains unchanged. In order to defeat the Realm Scourge once and for all. What do you intend to do? 
I shall first ascertain what kind of power he has. He has to be on the top of this mountain! Monsters! God, grant me the courage to overcome! Is it I that you seek? <sighs> My God! I am your humble servant, Sodaly. I came here to Ardra to spread your teachings, my lord. We built churches across the land where we gather the people and preach righteousness in harmony as well as offer gratitude in your name. I see. Then you are indeed the one whom we had been searching for. I never imagined such a place could exist in Artra. We have waited centuries for you to appear. Centuries? Then you truly are the Divine. But what could you ever have one of me for? It would take a long while to explain fully, so I'll keep it simple for now. We come from the future. Or, to put it more correctly, I suppose we were unexpectedly dropped into this era. If that wasn't enough, a great threat was also sent here to Ardra from the future. A great threat? You say? We must face that threat and defeat it for the sake of all our futures. However, the two of us cannot possibly achieve this task on our own. We tried to unify the peoples of Ardra and utilize their combined might to seal away the threat. Yet, it did not prove successful. Their constant desire for more power made them suspect one another, which in turn led to never-ending conflict, even between members of the same flesh and blood. The result was a painful lesson in how consuming man's desire to rule can be. But that also taught us what we ourselves were lacking. Can gods truly lack anything? We can. What could that possibly be? You. M me We need the ability to win people's hearts and minds and unify Ardra as one. The one who possesses such an ability is you, Sadali. I fear you grossly overestimate me. I am nothing more than a simple missionary. But, that said, if there is anything I can do to assist you, I shall gladly carry out whatever it may be. So please, tell me, what would you have me do? We would like you to keep serving as a leader of your faith and build strong ties with each nation's kings in order to eliminate needless conflicts. To build bonds with the kings of all the nations? Is one such as I truly capable of so lofty a task? I shall soon bestow rings upon the kings of two countries. Rings, you say? Yeah. 
These rings have the power to call forth what stands before you. Visions. They were... visions? Which two kingdoms will you bestow the rings upon? Horn and Lycoros. Lycoros, my lord? Your concerns are warranted. The royal family of Lycoros are cruel and ruthless. We once misjudged them and made a grave mistake. Then why would you attempt to give them power again? Ardra's civilizations have matured further since we made that mistake. And moreover, we have you to eat us now. <gasps> How your presence changes the course of Ardra's future. This is something we would like to see. If it is within my power, I shall do whatever it is you ask of me. Even if it costs me my life. We are grateful for your enthusiasm. But be mindful such passion does not burn you out. This task could take decades or possibly even centuries to accomplish. Centuries, my lady? I am sorry, but unlike you, I am not able to live that long. Then what would you say if we were able to grant you with eternal youth, just like Amnelis and I possess? Is such a thing even possible? It is indeed. But... You worry for the one that you love, don't you? As a priest, I would not phrase it that way, mind you. Amnelis is occasionally able to catch what we call premonitions. Fragmentary glimpses of Oracle depicting what the future holds. Then you have seen what shall happen to me? Only you remain young, while your loved one slowly ages and dies. Struggling with that cruel reality, you will not be able to concentrate on what you need to achieve. Subtly, I think it is best if we also meet the person you hold in your heart. I believe I understand. Exia. If this is too great a thing we ask, then please speak your mind. I would prefer to have you by my side in this, but... I came here to Ardra fully prepared to devote the rest of my life to your cause. If you must live a hundred years to see it done, then I shall also live a hundred years. Oh, Hexia. It is as I told you on the ship to Ardra. I saw an image of you standing proudly in a grand cathedral. Excuse me, what do you mean by saw, exactly? Exia also occasionally sees fragments of the future. In many a time we have been aided by these premonitions of hers. It is... Something amiss? As I said, Amnelis is similarly gifted with the ability to receive premonitions. The same gift as Exia? Indeed. I had contemplated what makes you the bearer of light that Amnelis and I have long searched for. I now believe I understand. Bracers that imbue their wearers with anti-aging properties. One for you, and one for Exia. 
We thank you both for your kindness and this most blessed gift. I give my word. We shall do our best to live up to your expectations. And so we begin. The long battle to open the door to the future. Sodaly, from the Church of the Crystal. I know you. You're the one in charge of all the churches across the land. Then that makes things easy. May I make a humble request for an audience with your king? For what purpose, exactly? Your kingdom is involved in a futile war. We believe problems should be resolved peacefully through dialogue rather than conflicts that kill and maim. It is for this reason I seek an audience. Then we ask that you leave. But... Why ever for? Do you not know? A good war makes for good gill. This is about... Riches? If we defeat an enemy general, then we receive a great bounty. And there's plenty of other rewards to be had, too. By that, I hope you do not mean pillaging. <laughs> and what of it? Our king wields a ring granted to him by God. Right. And so long as our kingdom has that, we have not to fear. But I hear that Horn, too, has such a ring. Does it now? Well, sure, Horn is not a kingdom to be taken lightly. But then... But then what? Enough of your talk! This has nothing to do with you! Be gone! Or else... Very well. We shall be on our way. <sighs> I think this should be far enough. Who might you be? And what are you doing here? Nothing. Nothing at all. Surely something must bring you here. We requested an audience with the King of Ligaros, but we were sent on our way. Is that so? You must be soldiers from Rundal. There's not much of Rundal left for us to be soldiers of. I see. We are sorry to hear what Likaros did to your kingdom. What were you hoping to achieve by your audience with Likaros's king? We were hoping to make him understand the stupidity of this war. Well, that's a fool's errand. All that man thinks about is killing his opponents and plundering them for all they're worth. Yes. The Likaros soldiers we just met also seem to be of that same mindset. <sighs> Have you tried the King of Horn instead? We were actually on our way to meet with King Rob of Horn next. Huh, I see. 
then I shall let you in on a little secret. Wizette has changed allegiances. Huh? Can this be true? I thought Wizette was in a firm alliance with Horn. It was Likaros's aim to make that alliance collapse from within. Then what will become of Wazette? I hear they made a pact with Likaros to split Ardra in two, east and west, and each rule over their respective sides. But I bet neither Likaros nor Wazette intend to keep their fair share of the bargain. This is certainly weighty news. But why are you telling us all this? I remember you. You're the one who preaches about God at those churches, aren't you? That would indeed be me. Something makes me feel that maybe, just maybe, you could do good for the state of these lands. <sighs> ah, pay me no heed. I wouldn't want for you to put yourself in danger. No, I shall do whatever I can. Thank you for the useful information. We shall make haste for Horn. Indeed. I am sure the King of Horn would be most interested to hear of these tidings. Well, you two take care then. Here's hoping we may have a world without war someday. Are you all right, Sodaly? The tyranny of Likaros continues no matter how many generations come and go. My involvement has not changed a thing. That is not true. You will bring light into this world ruled by chaos. I know it. Thank you for your unfaltering faith, Exia. You're right. It's not just the common folk. Even those former soldiers of countries ravaged by Likaros wish for peace. Exactly. And that is why we must press on to Horn. Agreed. Once we inform King Rob of Wazette's betrayal, he will surely lend us his aid. Then the number of people suffering under the tyranny of Ligaros should decrease. That's the spirit. You must have more confidence in yourself. <sighs> All right then. Let us hurry over to Horn and inform King Rob of these affairs. Well met, Sadali. Do you still continue your pilgrimages across the lands preaching respect for righteousness and the need for peace? I do, Your Majesty. As a neutral presence in Ardra, that is but all our humble church can do. Ha ha ha! There is no need for such modesty. I too have the heartfelt hope that war shall one day be vanquished from this world, just as you advocate. I might not be the mightiest of kings, but if there is anything I can do for you, just say the word. You are too kind, Your Majesty. But uh, there is one matter. What is it? You may speak freely. It is in regard to King Kuri of Wazette. King Kuri? I am due to meet with him soon to discuss the state of our alliance. Well. I have heard rumors that Wazette has shifted its allegiances to Likaros. Hmm. King Kuri is known for being cold-hearted and calculating. You wish to say that we should end our alliance with Wazette? Well, not exactly. The shortcut to defeating Likaros would be to eliminate Kuri 
and assume command of any remaining Wazette forces. Hmm. Your Majesty? No more than mere moments ago, you stated that your church was a neutral presence. But what you just said proves to the contrary, in that you would have Likaros destroyed. Th that's because many people will suffer if we leave Likaros to its own devices. What's to say that you, yourself, are not in league with Likaros? Wh why, I would never! No kingdom other than Likaros would find joy in sowing such seeds of discord between Horn and Wazette. <sighs> I apologize if I made you uncomfortable. But to back one side or another while touting neutrality is not an act to be lauded. Even if what you suggest is correct, I do not think I will be heeding such counsel. I am deserving of your reprimand. I was out of line, and for that, I am deeply sorry. So long as you see the way of things. But do not fear. Horn possesses the ring Gilgamesh bestowed upon us. No matter what Kuri schemes, we shall be able to handle it. King Rob spoke true and fair, but if we leave Likaros's tyranny unchecked, Ardra will suffer more than just ongoing turmoil. This land will never stand a chance against the great threat that Gilgamesh spoke of. We are doomed unless something is done. I must live up to the expectations Gilgamesh has for me, no matter the cost. I am so sorry. Why do you apologize, Axia? If only I could have one of my premonitions in times like these. But do not blame yourself. You have always been there for me when I've needed you. But I cannot continue to be so dependent on you in my times of need. I think we should try going to Wazette. To Wazette? Yes. It is time to talk to King Kuri in person. <sighs> I guess you are right. If Kuri were to know that we are aware of Wazette's betrayal... He might just give up on the idea. Then it is off to Wazette we go. <gasps> what is it? Exia? These are Wazette's forces! Could this be King Kuri himself? Hmm. A rare sight on the road indeed. It is an honor to finally meet you, Your Majesty. I am Sodaly. I know who you are. Be brief with your business. Wazette is one of the great kingdoms of Eastern Ardra. Your actions have repercussions on the fates of many citizens. I beg you, for the sake of peace, please refrain from carrying out futile wars. For the sake of peace, you say? Yes, your majesty. We shall have peace everlasting once I, Kuri, become the ruler of all of Ardra. <laughs> to 
you plan to kill King Rob? What? No, Sadali. This isn't wise. King Rob is fully aware that Wazette is in bed with Ligaros. I believe the only road to peace is for you to uphold your alliance with Horn and stand with them against Ligaros. Please do not jest in such a way. And if this is no manner of jest, what then? Why would you? Punishment. I know you whispered your words in the ears of Ra. Not be punished. For I shall not finish you off just yet. <laughs> <laughs> you follow the teachings of your god, you say. How laughable. I, Kuri, am God. Or at least one day I shall be. Someday soon. It is a certainty. And once I have shown the world my divine power, only then shall I have you executed. Why do you do this? What is it that makes you so cold hearted and cruel? Tell me, is there not even a shred of love or compassion for your fellow man left in your heart? If you have come count down your life without speaking falsehoods, then even I would have lent you my ear. However, I see what is really going on here. You use your church as cover to collude with the Winged One in a plot to kill me! The Great Kuri! But mark me! I shall slaughter all who oppose me, for that is my way! What is it? A report, Your Majesty. We have received word that Likaros and Horn have opened hostilities. Hmm, earlier than I had expected. I'd better not tarry here any longer. What would you have us do with these two, Your Majesty? Throw them in the castle dungeon, for all I care. Yes, Your Majesty. Run, Exia! I cannot leave you! You must report this to Gilgamesh at once! Go! I will come back to save you! Forget about her. As you command. You're coming with us back to the Zen Castle. Get moving. I cannot allow you to imprison me! I must stop these futile wars! It's no good. I shall never make it in time. I am all but certain King Rob will have met his end at the hands of Curry by now. It is all my fault. In my eagerness to stop Curry, I reveal too much to him. Why must it be like this? Why do our best laid plans fail so? 
my God, has placed his expectations in me. And yet, I have failed to live up to those expectations. No. We cannot be certain just yet. Kuri might not get his way. Even if he were to kill King Rob, Horn's forces would respond in opposition to him. Yes, that's it. Even Kuri must realize that if he were to perform such an act before the war is decided, then his own life would be at risk. King Rob may yet live. All is not lost. I must make haste to the battlefield! Your king is dead. You, you lonely... Oh? There are yet those who would stand against me? Then remember this. We have your newborn prince. His name is Dario, I believe. Listen well, soldiers of Horn. Do you detest the great Kuri? <laughs> Hate me all you want! But remember, we are in the middle of a war with the mighty kingdom of Likaros to the west! If you want your revenge on me and to take your kingdom back, then you must first defeat Likaros! For if you do not do so, your final hope, young Prince Dario, shall perish. We are too late. What have I done? Instead of ending this war, I have made it worse. <laughs> this cannot be good. We've been looking for you, Saddley. We have orders from King Kuri. Orders to kill you by the most brutal means possible. Father Sadali! What brings you to our remote village? <laughs> and what grievous wounds you have! Quickly, let us carry him into the village. We need to tend his wounds immediately. What is wrong? <sighs> Out of the way! <sighs> And the priest over. You know what's good for you. Never. You dare defy us. Do not do this. Spare your own lives and hand me over to Wazette. They will kill you if you disobey them. We cannot do such a thing. That's right. We could never hand you over to the likes of them. 
I am whom these soldiers want. They have no interest in your village. Father Thoughtily! No! What? What have you done? Why would you... Why would you do such a terrible thing? Why cannot you be satisfied? We're just taking my life! Isn't it obvious? You only have yourself to blame for causing us so much trouble. So we are going to make you suffer as much as we can before we put you out of your misery. We shall drag every single villager out here and end their miserable lives right in front of you. Nice and slowly. Please, no. <laughs> I'm here! Fool! You escaped with your life only to throw it away again! <sighs> We've been searching for you, Sodaly. We did not expect you would have escaped to such a remote place. What of Gilgamesh? We split up in order to better search for you. But even then, we couldn't find you. Just when I was at a loss, I had a premonition. So that is how you found me here? It's going to be all right. I shall deal with these curs. You're going to deal with us, you say? Don't make me laugh. Be sorely mistaken if you think this is all of us. There's so many. It's too dangerous, Axia. Escape while you still can. You will go nowhere but the grave. to die. So much for being the messenger of God. <gasps> the winged one! It appears we are too late. Come to be here. Where is Exia? And what of those villagers? There is no need to worry. Exia lives. And that befell you no longer happened. What do you mean by that? Uh, uh, my head! My apologies for what you are experiencing. The heavens happened. 
The last thing I remember was being chased and fleeing to a remote village. Then those Wazet soldiers appeared, and Axia came to save me. But then, we were both. We have turned back time. Incredible. Are the two of you capable of transcending time itself? Allow me to explain it as simply as I can. So, if I have this correct, by using the power of that crystal, you are able to return to this exact point in time with your memories intact. But each occasion you reset time, it consumes the magical energy stored in the crystal. Therefore, the number of times you can perform such temporal resets is limited. Yes, that is the gist of it. It is possible, even for those who lose their lives, to return with their memories intact. But a soul that experiences death is ultimately damaged. Should it go through the process too many times, the mind will begin to deteriorate. Then, this pain I feel coursing through my head. It is the scream of your very soul. So that is why you gave me your apologies just before. We could have reset time with you losing all memory of what had transpired, just like Exia has done. But doing so would leave us no wiser, and only having wasted our time. I understand your decision. I shall view this as punishment. Divine punishment, in fact, for my inadequacy to properly carry out God's will. As for Axia, I am thankful knowing that she does not remember what befell her. I erred greatly in ways that could not be undone. Even if it harms my mind and soul, it is better that I maintain the memories of those mistakes, lest I repeat them again. We are thankful for your understanding. However, I implore you not to go beyond what you, or your soul, can bear. I shall be careful. Everything fell apart again this time, due to the unbridled actions of Likaros and Wazette. We will need to do something about those two kingdoms in order to avoid a similar fate. But what is that something we need to do? A most vexing question. It is as Sadali says. Those two countries are an impediment to our unification of Ardra. However, we cannot assume that simply eliminating them will be the solution. Because other countries might similarly rise up in their place? Indeed. Hmm. Perhaps we should wait until the next generation is ready before conferring the rings once more. That makes sense. With the passing of more generations, we can expect greater fruition from civilization. And what if we were to try bestowing the rings on just one kingdom for a change? Hmm. We had worked on the assumption that when we give the rings to two different countries, it creates competition between them which in turn stimulates their evolution. But it is only natural for a sense of impending danger to develop when another country possesses great power. And as a result, the outbreak of war becomes an inevitability. In that case, it could be an interesting strategy to try giving a ring to just one prudent kingdom. That is my belief. What do you think about Heindler? I have no objections. The royal family of Heindler is said to have the proud blood of the dragon in their veins, for what it's worth. Then so be it. 
Let us begin work putting this new design into action.